All right, dudes. Uh, th this is where we start our evolution in geological time topic. This is a rad topic and is essentially the basis of all biology. So it's really important. Um, let's start with the thing that we all grew up loving. And if you're lucky, you never grew out of loving fossils because that's how we know about dinosaurs. All right. Um, so what's the point? Today, you want to be able to understand some basic vocabulary. In this unit, there is a lot of vocabulary. Please set up a separate vocab list. Um, you also want to be able to outline different types of fossils, which means you know, briefly describe what they are. And you also want to describe how some of them are formed. All right, this is Triceratops. Triceratops is a cool dinosaur, one of my favorites. All right. Um, so vocab, let's get into it. So basically, you, you want to know what extant means? Extant is a species that is still alive. You are a Homo sapiens sapiens, and Homo sapiens sapiens are still alive. Extinct. This is a species that has completely died out. For example, our cousins, Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, completely dead. We probably murdered them. Extinction. This is the act of becoming extinct. Um, and a fossil. This is a pretty important one. So basically, the preserved evidence of an organism. So something left over that shows us that something was alive there. So it could often be part of an organism. It can be rocks that are made out of... We'll get into that in a minute. Um, it can also be footprints, um, holes in the ground, something a trace of an organism that was once there. Fossils can teach us a lot, though. This is Tong Child. Tong Child is a child, it's about that, the head, the skull is about that big, um, of Australopithecus africanus. Australopithecus africanus is one of your ancestors. It is a very, very early ancestor, uh, walked upright. This child, we can tell here, because of these holes here and the claw marks in there, was picked up by an eagle carried up into the sky and then dropped and that's why the back of the skull is broken the way it is so this child was hunted and murdered by an eagle looking for some food um it would have been there playing with its family and then along comes an eagle swoops down takes it away by gripping into its orbits of its eye sockets and then would have dropped it off a cliff most likely so we learn a lot from fossils fossils are really cool they can also teach us not just about the features of an organism, but a little bit about how they lived. And yeah, let's move on. So how do we get the fossils? How do they make them? Well, how do they make them? Um, how are they made? Uh, this here, sketch that out. Or if you're feeling lazy, you can do the next bit, but you really should sketch this part out because it's pretty important. But we'll talk about it in short. Essentially, the animal or plant dies. I'm probably gonna use the word animal from now on, or organism, but I mean both of them. It dies and it lays down. The soft tissue decays, okay, but before it can completely decay, so usually when you've got skeleton left over, the stuff which is hard to decay, the organism will be covered with sand, mud, a sediment of some kind, a, a dirty covering. Um, this gets then gets like concreted down, or like some, turns into a cement, um, and hard, solidifies it, and layers go on top. Often, you then get something called mineralization, which is where the minerals, calcium, in the bone gets swapped out with something else. Okay, we'll get to this in particular. Or the whole thing decays away and you get a cast. Later, scientist comes along, digs it up, and we now have a fossil. And then the scientist does rad work and we learn all about the cool things that used to live, but don't anymore. All right, so we're now going to look at four, that's three, four types of fossils. Uh, first fossil is the simplest and it is original fossils and this is basically when the part of an organism is preserved okay so it's still there kind of as it was um, so it's usually the hard parts which are resistant to decay and scavengers don't eat so if we're looking at bones um, if it's a recentish bone the calcified parts will decay away but the sorry the proteins will decay away in a bone but the calcified parts will stay there um, this means it's very brittle and very, very light compared to other bones. Um, occasionally, an organism will die and it'll just be in a really lucky position for us to come along later on, like um, in permafrost or 
peat bogs, stuff like that. Um, and that's what we have here. This, this is a woolly mammoth. That's a baby woolly mammoth that died in Russia, and it was in the permafrost. And then it got hot, and the permafrost defrosted. Um, spoilers, it's not meant to do that. That's climate change. Um, and outcome, and we're actually finding all kinds of woolly mammoths at the moment in Siberia and Russia. Um, or you've got this one. This is not saying I'm tall at the shoulders because I am very, very short. This is an echidna that is one meter tall. So right there, that's a meter high at the shoulders. This is a skeleton which was found in Wellington Caves. And it's probably about 50,000 years old, maybe. Maybe thereabouts. Um, then we have the ones we're all familiar with. This is the most common one that we know of. And it's called replacement fossils. And this is how we know about dinosaurs. So, you know, they're sick. Um, this is what we mostly think of in terms of fossils, I just said that. Uh, part of the organism, like so it dies, all stuff happens. And then it's mineralized, which means it's chemically changed. So, basically, um, it takes a long time. We're talking like over 60 million years. I'm about to tell you what mineralized is. Be cool. It's over 60 million years, right? Um, the calcium carbonate, which is one of the chemicals in the bones, it gets replaced with silica or silicon dioxide from the rocks so just here's your rock so here's your bone here's the rock around it and they just they little chemical reactions occur and they swap chemicals out so what this means is the bone becomes a solid lump of rock in the shape of the dinosaur or whatever it is um this is archaeopteryx is it a bird is it a dinosaur is it both um well birds are dinosaurs so you know it's both in fact, we call modern living birds avian dinosaurs. And if you're a specialist working in the field, you call them coelosaurian theropod dinosaurs. And that's pretty sweet too. Um, then we have our third type, carbon film. Um, basically, the organ everything's made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And when it dies, the only thing that's left over after everything else has decayed is a black layer of carbon um, that makes the fine details visible it's really cool that is just sort of painted on that layer of rock uh, because of where it died and just rotted away and basically this is what coal is coal is like really thick carbon films um and our last one number four indirect or trace fossils uh this is one of where's my mouse this is one of my favorite things in the entire world and it should be one of yours it's okay if it's not you're missing out not me um so basically here, not part of the organism, so imprints, foot tracks, feces, burrows, holes, whatever, etc. that's what, what I meant, is left behind. Um, it's usually a mold, um, so it casts like a negative image um, in powdery soil. So this down here was volcanic ash, and a cement can be formed when it gets when it rains, or if it's mud, it can harden and dry. We've all seen that before. Um, Internal molds can also be found. We'll tell you what these are in a minute. Internal molds can also be found, and this is usually crustaceans. All right, so what do we have here? Here we have something called the Laetoli footprints. This was the first evidence ever of an ancient hominin, Eurohominin, humans are hominins, our line back are hominins, hominin meaning person, all the way back. Um, and this would have been Australopithecus afarensis, probably. I can't quite remember, um, but this is the oldest evidence we have of something walking upright and habitually walking upright. These go on for miles. I, oh, this the the solid track that this comes from is 80 meters long, but there's miles of these, and it's they're habitually, which means that's what they naturally do, walking upright, and that's cool. And we can even measure how fast they're walking, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, um, the Laetoli footprints are super, super duper amazing, and they're in Africa, and you should, you know, just go there, check it out, it'd be awesome, why not? Or look them up on Google. All right, I'll see you in class.